The brazen ball, a solid piece of brass, was cast with a door on the side that could be opened and latched. The victim would be placed inside the ball. The fire was set underneath it until the metal became literally yellow as it was heated. The captive would then be slowly roasted to death, all while screaming in agonizing pain. The bull was purposely designed to amplify these screams and make them sound like the bellowing of a bull. Spanish donkey. The captive is put to sit naked on a donkey-like device, which is actually a vertical wooden board with a very sharp V-wedge on top of it. After that, the torturer would add heavy weights to the victim's feet, starting as a small cut. In some time, wedge would cut deeper and deeper into the victim's body, until finally it sliced through all the way. Foot roasting. The victim's feet were imprisoned in a stock, and then red-hot coal was placed right under them. When the subject was interrogated, a screen was put between the heat and his feet, acting as a relief. If he refused to confess, his bare feet were exposed to the flames. The torture progressed until the victim's feet were charred to the bone. When this occurred, the phalanx and other bones fell as the feet were completely burned. This very rarely resulted in death, but it mutilated in the victim for a lifetime. Breast Reaper Used to cause a major blood loss. The claws, which were often red hot, would be placed on the exposed breasts as the spikes penetrated beneath the skin. It would then be pulled or jerked, causing large chunks of flesh to come off with it. If the woman survived the torture, she would be mutilated for life. Pier of Anguish This was a pier shaped device with the body of the pier made up of four metal leaves joined by a hinge at its top and a key or crank on one end. The pier was inserted into the vagina, anus or throat, depending on the nature of the crime committed. The oral device was reserved for heretics, the anal device was used on homosexuals, while vaginal piers were used on witches. Turning the key opened the leaves, causing massive internal damage. Chinese water torture is a process where the water is slowly dripped onto a person's forehead allegedly driving the restrained victim insane. This doesn't sound like much pain, but in reality this is a gruesome torture, simply because of the fact that the non-stop dripping of the water on the forehead will keep the victim awake and unable to concentrate. All the subject can do is to wait for the next drop, over and over again. Due to the sleep deprivation, the victim is bound to die. Rat Torture being enclosed with rats is a torture enough, but apparently this is not enough for medieval times. One of the most sadistic of all torture techniques involved having a cage with one open side strapped against the victim's body. It would then be filled with large rodents and a heating element would be placed on the other side of the cage. The rodents' natural instinct led them to flee from the intense heat source. In order to escape, they would borrow through the victim's body, with fatal results. Bamboo torture. The captive was tied securely in place above a young bamboo shoot, which tips were cut sharp to create a spear-like top. Over several days, the sharp, fast-growing shoot would first puncture through the victim's skin and continue to grow through the abdomen and eventually emerging through the other side, causing one of the most painful deaths ever inflicted. The tub. The convicted person would be placed in a wooden tub or a pair of back-to-back -back narrow rowboats or hollowed out tree trunks with only their head sticking out. The captive was then left to float on a warm stagnant pond while the executioner would pour them with milk and honey with special attention devoted to eyes, ears and mouth. And soon flies would begin to feed on them. The victim was also force fed regularly and would end up swimming in their excrement. After a few days, maggots and worms would devour their body, as they decayed alive. <laughs> Impalement First, the torturer would force the subject to sit on a thick and sharp pole, or the torturer would force the pole in with the wooden mallet. 
When the pole was then raised upright, the victim was left to slide onto the pole with their own weight. The pole would often emerge through the sternum, and its tip would reach a position under the chin, or the head or shoulders. As a result, the process could take up to three days for death to relieve the victim of their pain.